Welcome to 2025, where GPUs are out of stock, GPU MSRPs never existed, and PC gaming has become a luxury. Yet, here stands the RX 9070 from AMD, your best option in the current GPU market chaos. You may not be able to get it at its stated MSRP, but under the current circumstances of wanting to buy new, it's one of the best choices, in my opinion. And here it is, the RX 9070, which was released on the 6th of March 2025. I purchased the Gigabyte Gaming OC Edition. From a cost perspective, I paid well over its MSRP, around $750, but that's mainly due to import duties and taxes. At its core, this card is powered by AMD's RDNA 4 architecture, featuring 56 compute units, 3584 stream processors. The game clock is set at 2210 MHz, with the boost clock reaching over 2800 MHz for peak performance. Gigapart states that the base clock is up to 2700 MHz, but I've had it boost well into the 2800s and hold the clock, usually jumping between 2820 and 2880 MHz. So Gigabyte have done a decent overclock on the card, considering AMD's reference boost clock is only 2520 MHz. For VRAM, it is equipped with 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory on a 256-bit bus. The RX 9070 effectively delivers a memory bandwidth of around 640 gigabytes per second. Thermal management is handled by the Windforce cooling system, featuring three Hawk fans and a large copper plate with composite copper heat pipes. The card itself is a PCI Express 5 device by 16 lanes and has a TDP of 220 watts. As far as power usage is concerned, at 100% core usage with boost clocks well into the 2800s, I've seen the wattage go as high as 240 watts and maintain that usage. The card requires two 8-pin PCI Express power cables and Gigabyte suggests you pair this GPU with at least a 750 watt power supply. As far as output connectors are concerned, the card comes with two DisplayPort 2.1A ports and two HDMI 2.1B ports. Size-wise, the card fitted really easily into my Cougar MX330 case. It's actually smaller than my XFX RX 6800 Quick 319 Black Edition GPU. I must say the card looks really cool. I do like the black and grey design with the RGB logo on the side. You can control the RGB and slide the Gigabyte logo horizontally if you don't want the Gigabyte logo to light up and you just want to expose the side lighting as is. The GPU also comes with dual BIOS which lets you switch between performance and silent modes, giving you control over how your card operates. This GPU competes directly with Nvidia's RTX 5070. When compared to the 5070 in pure rasterization tasks, the RX 9070 is generally between 10 and 15% faster on average, obviously depending on the specific game or workload. When coming to ray tracing performance though, the RTX 5070 does beat the RX 9070, but strangely enough not in all ray tracing tasks, which tells you how much AMD has improved their ray tracing performance. With that all said, here are the full specs of my test system. I've paired this GPU with the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, hee <laughs> hee, 32 gigs of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz, all running on the Gigabyte B550M DS3H ultra durable motherboard, all powered by a RAID Max Cobra Series RX 1000 AEB 1000 Watt 80 plus gold power supply. Let's now jump into some gaming benchmarks. Kicking it off, we have Dying Light 2 at 1080p with the high graphics preset. The GPU managed to maintain an average of 164 frames per second and had a min FPS of 110 and a max FPS of 202. At 1440p, we managed an average of 139 FPS and had a min FPS of 100 and a max FPS of 171. Next we have Call of Duty Black Ops 6. All these benchmarks were done at native resolution, no upscaling technologies were used. Starting with 1080p we ran with two different presets, as you can see with the balanced preset, the RX 9070 managed an average frame rate of 179 FPS, and at the extreme preset it managed an average FPS of 146. Moving over to 1440p, at the balance preset, we managed an average frame rate of 174, and at the extreme preset, the GPU managed an average frame rate of 131. Now let's move on to Doom Eternal. We kept to only 1440p here. 
So with the Ultra Nightmare preset at 100% resolution scale with no ray tracing, we managed an average frame rate of 256 FPS, a max FPS of 429, and a min FPS of 174. At 1% lows, they came in at 197 FPS. So this was a great result for this GPU. For the same settings, but with ray tracing, we managed an average frame rate of 175 FPS, a max FPS of 262, and a min FPS of 114. And for the 1% lows, they came in at 140 FPS per second. Now for our final gaming benchmark, we have Black Myth Wukong. For the high preset at 1080p with super resolution set to 75% with FSR, we managed an average frame rate of 133 FPS. For max FPS we got 154, and for min FPS we came in at 90 frames per second. For the same high preset but at 1440p with super resolution also set to 75% with FSR, we managed an average frame rate of 105. For max FPS we got 121, and for min FPS we got 78. Let's now take a look at the ray tracing results. For the same 1080p settings, but with full ray tracing turned on and set to medium, we managed an average frame rate of 58. For max FPS we got 73 and for min FPS we got 45. For 1440p with the same settings with full ray tracing turned on and set to medium we managed an average frame rate of 40 FPS. For max FPS we got 51 and for min FPS we got 28. So quite a good showing for this GPU. I personally think for what it is and for its performance it's not a bad buy. Obviously depending I guess on its price. For its stated MSRP it's a decent buy but that's if you can even find it for MSRP. I find it to be really power efficient as well when looking at its power usage versus its performance. The GPU, temperature wise, relatively stayed cool and I didn't see it ever go higher than 65 degrees. And I didn't see the VRAM go anything beyond 83 degrees Celsius. But it seems like that is common with all these RX 9070s. The price difference between the RX 9070 and 9070 XT in the country I'm from was rather high, way more than $50, so I couldn't justify the difference for an extra 8 to 15% of performance. Anyways, what do you think? Does AMD's RX 9070 make the chaos of the 2025 GPU market worth it? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth reviews. And with that said, keep it tidy and I'll see you on the next one.